Hello, welcome back to our daily Godcast cast, <laughs> our daily Godcast, and this is not our evening prayer, but again, our 33-day uh, journey, consecration to our Lord Jesus Christ and His divine mercy, with the aid, assistance, intervention, intercession of our Blessed Mother. And uh, yesterday, uh, day one, I think. I might have messed up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to really matter. I think we started a day early, but that's okay. It's okay. We, you know, well begun is half done. So we've got uh, day two today, and uh, yesterday we heard about uh, the importance of trust, and trust is really a deeper level of faith. And we have who we refer to as our father in faith, and that's Abraham. And hopefully you are familiar with his story. Um, Abram was uh, living in his own land and his wife Sarai, and they were childless. And uh, God summoned Abram. And he didn't tell him explicitly where he was going. He said, go to a land where I will send you. And so Abram trusted, had faith in the word of God, and did as he was requested to do. He set off. And along the way, Abram complained to God that uh, he had no heirs, no children. And God said, look up into the sky and see all the stars. And he says, your descendants will be as numerous as those. And Abram again trusted, had faith in God, and went to where he was sent. And his name, God changed his name from Abram to Abraham. Uh, because Abraham means father of many or father of nations and then his wife Sarai was given the Hebrew name Sarah and the two of them lived into their ripe old age and still had no children finally God blessed them with their son Isaac and then Abraham was put to a true test, a test not of love, but a test of faith, a test of trust. And he was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac. And as counterintuitive and as crazy as that would seem, Abraham trusted still and was willing to obey God's word. He had total trust in God, thinking and believing that even if he sacrificed Isaac, God was God, and he was capable of bringing Isaac back, raising him from the dead. And so he was willing to, you know, sacrifice him and he was ready to do so he had done everything get ready and at the very last moment the angel of the lord held abram's abraham's hand lay not a hand do not harm the boy and then they saw the ram caught in the thicket sacrifice the the ram and um so this idea of total trust that we kind of got a glimpse of yesterday in the story of Faustina has its roots here in Genesis, the book of Genesis, that's chapter 22 with the story of Abraham sacrificing his son only to be held, uh, stopped by the angel of the Lord at the very last moment. Let's read a little bit here. 
says, what a hard test, yet Abraham was ready to go through with it. He was ready to kill Isaac. He is, he, as he had been commanded. Why? Because of his faith. The letter to the Hebrews expresses it best. Where it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your descendants be named. He considered that God was able to raise men even from the dead. And that's from Hebrews 11, verses 17 through 19. There's the marvel of Abraham's faith. He believed God's promise, even to the extent of hoping against hope, and considered that God was able to raise up Isaac even from the dead. That is faith. That is why Abraham truly is our father in faith. In fact, he teaches us the essence of faith, which is to believe God's word, to believe that God is faithful to his promises, to believe that God is faithful, even if it seems impossible. Now as our father in faith, Abraham is the complete opposite of our mother in doubt, Eve. After all, unlike Eve, Abraham refused to give in to the temptation to think that God is a liar, to think that God doesn't keep his promises, to think that God is not good. May Abraham's example of faith help us to overcome the effects of original sin caused by Eve's doubt. In other words, may it help us to trust God's promises and even to hope against hope. So let us pray on this day of our journey towards consecration for a deepening of our faith, a deeper trust. And I, I, I promised to, to tell you a story yesterday about trust. And some of you may have heard it, and I apologize if you've heard it, but it's a, uh, it's a good story, I think. Um, back in the 1950s, there was a man who... Uh, set up a tightrope at Niagara Falls across the top of the waterfall, across the Horseshoe Falls from one end to the other, a cable. And he would walk across the tightrope from one side to the other. And people came by the thousands, marveling at his skill, marveling at his bravery, and applauded him, you know. And then one day he put on a blindfold. He said, do you believe that I can do this blindfolded? Yes, we believe. We believe you can do it. So he blindfolded himself, and sure enough, he walked across the tightrope to one end, turned around, came back, and they were all amazed. Then, on another day, he brought a wheelbarrow with him. He said, do you believe that not only can I walk across this tightrope blindfolded, but I can do it while pushing a wheelbarrow. And they said, yes, we believe, we believe. He said, well, get in, get in. See, the difference between faith and trust, that deeper level of belief, that deep, deeper level of trust, is to not just stand on the sidelines and say, I believe, but to get into God's wheelbarrow and do the impossible with God. Because with, not, with God, nothing is impossible, as we hear from, from Abraham today. So here on this journey towards total consecration to our Lord into his divine mercy, let us pray the prayer that's prescribed for the day, and then we'll pray the other prayers that we prayed last night again. So today our prayer is this. Come Holy Spirit, fire of mercy, please give me such a trust in God's word that I might even hope against hope. Amen. Hail Mary full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. And again, as we go through these 33 days, let us reflect on this prayer. Something along the way of this prayer is going to touch your heart today. Something is going to jump out at you and, and make you think about it. Bring it into your heart. Contemplate what it's telling you this very day. So together we pray, pray the, the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. As we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So our journey continues. May our faith and may our trust in God deepen and be firm. And God bless you on this night, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. See you all tomorrow.